In the Slovenian philosopher Slavoj Zizek's book, The Sublime Object of Ideology, the author recounts and explains an old Russian war joke. At an art exhibition in Moscow, there is a picture showing Nadezhda Krupskaya, Lenin's wife, in bed with a young member of the Komsomol. The title of the picture is Lenin in Warsaw. A bewildered visitor asks a guide, but where is Lenin? The guide replies quietly and with dignity, Lenin is in Warsaw. If we put aside Lenin's position as the absent third, the bearer of the prohibition of the sexual relationship, we can say that Lenin in Warsaw is, in a strict Lacanian sense, the object of this picture. In Alfonso Cuaron's Y tu mamá también, we follow the coming-of-age story of Julio, Tenoch, and Luisa as they travel to a beach. Shot in a more documentary-style approach rather than relying on a Hollywood budget, the handheld camera gives the entire story and setting a more authentic feel. Guiding us along is an omniscient narrator that will interject and fill in the audience on what a certain character is thinking or feeling at the moment. Occasionally, the camera and the narrator's attention will drift away from our main trio and we'll get a glimpse into the lives or surroundings inhabited by Julio, Tenoch, and Luisa. The film takes place at the end of the 90s, just when the ruling party of Mexico was voted out of the office for the first time in seven decades straight. The social and political climate is made apparent not through the story, but in our protagonist's characterization and surroundings. When some films try to commentate on social issues, they'll do so by using the actual narrative. But Itu Mama Tambien demonstrates that it can arguably be more effective if encoded into the background. In the beginning of this film, as Julio and Tenoch drive on a busy road, they pass a dead body, which were informed was a construction worker who was killed by a speeding bus while trying to get to work. Later on, as a local fisherman and his family take the trio out for a boat ride, we're informed that in a year a luxury hotel will be built in the area and the local tourism board will block any requests he submits to fish. He will soon become a janitor at that same hotel, where he will never fish again. These stories of lives ended or shattered by a rapidly changing and maturing country more effectively inform the viewer of the reality of life in the present climate. Since any observations of politics and the economy are done in the background, they are ever-present, regardless of the decisions made by the characters. I mentioned earlier the joke about Lenin in Warsaw. Despite Lenin himself not being depicted in the image, in a way the painting is still very much about him. But instead of literally, it's more about what his absence means for others. In that same vein, although the narrative is absent of discussions of politics, it is constantly in the background, making it feel much more oppressive and influential in the way our protagonists behave. Alfonso Cuaron has also said that the film is as much about the coming-of-age story of a country as it is about the coming-of-age of Julio and Tenoch, so let's compare them from the beginning to the end of the film. Julio and Tenoch are two friends from different social classes who spend their youth always chasing their next hedonistic indulgence, whether it be the next girl, beer, joint, or whatever. Upon meeting Luisa, the three embark on a road trip to Boca del Cielo, a beautiful beach that they're not sure exists. On the way, Julio and Tenoch will share stories of their sexual conquests in order to impress Luisa, and she responds by telling them about her first love who died in a motorcycle accident at 17. After another day of bonding, Luisa has sex with the Nutch and then with Julio. She remarks that it's not a big deal and that it would have happened in either order, but both of the boys take it personally and get upset at each other, revealing that they both had sex with each other's girlfriends. They begin to fight but reluctantly make up after Luisa threatens to leave and the three finally make it to the beach. After exploring and bonding with a family of fishermen, the three get drunk and bond over their sexual histories, reconciling their past tension. After dancing to Si No Te Hubiera Sido, the three retreat to their room for the night, where they share a kiss during the beginning of a threesome. Waking up the next day, the boys leave the beach and go home, while Luisa decides to stay behind. Her final goodbye to these boys was simply, life is like foam, so give yourself away to the sea. Once arriving, the boys stop seeing each other, and after a year they awkwardly agree to get a coffee and catch up. In that time, Julio has begun studying biology at a public school, whereas Tenoch has begun studying economics, despite mentioning earlier that he hated it. During their discussion, Tenoch tells Julio that a month after they left Boca del Cielo, Luisa passed away due to a cancer that she kept hidden from everybody. The two reflect on their time spent with her before Tenoch excuses himself and tells Julio he'll see him around. The narrator interjects one final time to inform us that the two will never meet again. It's a moment that will hit the audience especially hard, potentially even leaving people confused as to what the point of it all was. 
But with the knowledge of Luisa's death, some of the film begins to take on a new meaning. One of the biggest themes in this film is the connection between sex and youth. Julio and Tenoch spend their days obsessed with finding their next hookup, but by the end of the film, intimate acts become a more central and personal act, something that Julio and Tenoch can't come to terms with, which ultimately breaks up their friendship. But while for them sex is a momentary release, for Luisa it's an escape from her fear and current situation. The days Luisa spent with Julio and Tenoch were the last days spent in their youthful stage of life. As soon as they returned, their friendship ended, and they both gave in to the societal pressures of becoming adults, stuck in forced life paths that their hearts aren't in. Luisa rejects the notion by telling them instead to live that free-spirited and hopeful existence that we briefly experience in our youth. That life has no real form, so throw yourself at it completely and experience everything there is to feel. In the end, unable to deal with their emotions, Julio and Tenoch fall into society's expectations of what they should be, evoking a feeling of bitterness and loneliness associated with the age of maturity, ultimately failing to follow Luisa's advice. Itumama Tambien is a heartfelt depiction of three lives struggling to come to terms with the implications and decisions that come with the passing of time, while painting a realistic portrait of a country going through a rapid and difficult change. Commentating on the impermanence and fragility of a current situation, this film is an important reminder to consider the ways in which we live our lives and to embrace the moments of happiness, however short they may be.